this is what we look like on day six of Saturday. Here's the sanctuary. Look how much we're almost back to normal down there. Wow. Now, Andreas is doing what they call a modification. He tells us that on site they have to do different things uh, you know, to make stuff fit a little bit differently. Looking at the console, of course, and remember the stop trees that we were looking at yesterday? Well, now a bunch of them have been installed, and there they are. Let's see if we can get up in there and see where they terminate. Yeah. See? That's what the keyboard looked like. Yeah, there's the top of the uh, stop trees. If you notice, a lot of those little uh, braces, they're not braces, I guess they are braces between the uh, white columns that will hold the pipes. They are there, and then some of the individual pipes will have little tubes. You know, for the air, and that's what that is. These are all the facade pipes. There's the bottom of the wind chest and the very top of those actuators that, that help and assist the draw knobs and all that good stuff happening. Yeah. Okay, let's get oriented. There's the console. See the draw knobs coming straight up. You see those stop trees again. And this is one of the racks that will hold some of the facade pipes. And then coming down. Now, there is a wind chest. On top of the wind chest. Are those units that actually hold the pipes? I forget what they're called. But right there on the side of the wind chest, you can see that's where the stop trees are attached. And those pieces of wood sticking out from the side of the wind chest, they are to be drawn in and out. And that's what lets air into the pipe, into that rank of pipes. back toward the center of the instrument. There's another one of those. Can you imagine all of the pipes that are there? Thousands of them. And then behind that, you see behind the stop trees, there's the trackers that were attached to the back of the console. And then looking up, I'm actually on the scaffolding, by the way, <laughs> the second level. You see how high they keep on going? There's that little cross piece that we were looking at yesterday. Okay, I'm still standing in the same place that I was. I remember a few days ago they were installing those huge reed pipe. Well, this is like, what, 10 or 12 feet up. And this just shows you what the finished process looks like with them. Remember the one that had the mitered cut? There it is, kind of sticking out at a 90 degree angle. And here's some more, I think this is the sub base. Those little holes are where the, um, the, the little hoses will be attached that bring the air to them, because they're not sitting on the wind chest. They're sitting on that little rank, on that little rack right there. Get to the top. Okay. Okay. 
was like Paul's installing one of the racks that will hold the pipes here on the side. And then you see Tim and Eric are up putting the, I guess we'll call it the roof on the Oregon. I will not get up that high. Yeah. You can see right in the middle of the shot, that's the ceiling of the sanctuary. And the organ is just inches below that. Wow. And that's Paul. All right, we are at Saturday afternoon and uh, most of everything that's been laying around in the pews is going to be stored elsewhere for worship tomorrow. So that's what's going on. I believe that's called the Bourdon. That would be one of those huge flu pipes. Ah. I don't know how th these guys have I've obviously done this before. Notice how high that lift is and see how it sways a little bit left to right. Mm -mm. Chucky's not going to get on that. So that's one pipe and how many more have to go up like that? Wow. Looks like it's got to go back a ways, yes. Yeah. 